Welcome to English Reading by Hidemi Woods. I'll read episodes from my books and talk about them. I hope you enjoy the show with me. Hi, I'm Hidemi Woods. I'll read an episode from a book I wrote titled An Old Tree in Kyoto. This time I'm gonna read an episode called End. It's about what happened during my grandfather's last days in the hospital. End. It seems that people look back and judge themselves when they are nearing their ends. Not long before his death, my grandfather suddenly told my parents that he wanted to go to the department store where he once worked vigorously but had to leave to succeed the family. My parents thought his consciousness grew dim because they assumed that he meant shopping, which he was too frail to do. I know what he really meant. He realized that he should not have given up what he wanted to do for his life. On his deathbed, he pointed at my mother and said, You're next. I wonder if she would end up like him. Surely she looks a strong candidate for that matter. My grandfather used to take me to the department store when I was a child. I lived with my grandparents, and my grandfather really liked to go out. He went out when he didn't have to do so. He just went out. That was his purpose, going out, simply. Sometimes he took me with him to the department store. That was his most favorite destination. When I was little, I thought he really liked the department store itself. He didn't shop anything, he just browsing. He was just browsing all the floor. I thought that was his hobby, strolling around the department store. But uh, he, why he liked the department store so much was another there was another reason why he liked it so much he used to work at the at one of the department stores in Kyoto when he was young and uh, he really liked to work there he the department store he used to work was called Daimaru which 
all the Japanese people know the name, the famous department store chain. And he worked there, uh, a Kyoto branch, Daimaru. And uh, he worked there as a young man, and、uh, he was a candidate for an, an executive. Because he worked so hard and、uh, diligently, he was the first person to show up there in the morning, even before the, the security guard arrived there. He was there and sweep and He waited the security guard. He waited for the security guard to open the department store. And he, as soon as he got in, he began to sweep the floor, dust the merchandise, dust off the merchandise. Straighten up the shelves. He was just a diligent worker there. So all the executives there expected him to be a future executive. But My grandfather's father suddenly passed away, and he had to leave the job he loved so much in order to support his mother and his sister. And、uh, he quit. Working in the department store and took up the job his father was doing. That was,、uh, that was farming. My grandfather became a farmer by, <coughs> quit, by quitting being、uh, a store clerk. So one, one day, when I visited my grandparents after I left home, out of nowhere, I just asked him why he quit. Job he loved so much when his father died. I thought he did not necessarily have to quit. I thought he could, probably could, support. His mother and his sister by working there, by continuing to be a sales clerk with his salary. So I asked him, asked him, why did you quit? It's so You are so expected as a, 
as an elite candidate, but he threw away. Why did you do that? I asked him. And he answered repeatedly Because my father died. Because my father died was his only answer. And I said, Just because your father died, you didn't have to be a farmer, which you didn't exactly want to. Why did you do that? I still asked him because I didn't understand his decision. And he told me that I had no other choice but being a farmer. I really didn't like to leave the job at the department store, but I just had to. And I said to him, What if it was possible to support your family with your salary from the department store? Wouldn't it be possible? It, it could have been possible, could it? Don't you think? And he, he was thinking for a while on what I said. And he said, yeah, you're right. It could have been possible. I could have supported them with my salary, but I don't know. But it could have been, he said. So when I heard what he said, on his bed in the hospital to my parents. My parents told me that he he was so con confused because he 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 asked them to take him to the department store. My parents thought he meant shopping. He wanted to shop at the department store, although he was locked in the hospital. He was quite close to his own death. So my parents didn't understand what he was talking about. But the moment I heard that from my parents. I knew what my grandfather, what my grandfather meant. I thought it, what I said to him on that particular day might have remained in his in his mind, deep in his mind, and he, that thought popped up in his head when he was close, close to death.
since I said that to him, he might have always carried that thought in his mind. The thought that it could have been possible to continue working at the department store. Close to his own death, he asked my parents to take him to the department store. As for my mother, to whom my grandfather said, You're next, she would say, A lot of things on her deathbed. I, I guarantee she would millions of things. She would have millions, millions of things to to ask somebody for her to do, because she was a full basket. Of regrets. She pretty much gave up everything that she wanted to do for her life because she married for money. She threw away everything. She sacrificed her life for money because. My family used to have family fortune, and that was the only reason my mother got married with my father. So, my grandfather knew that, and that's why he said to her, You're next. Your next, who, who would need to need to pay for the regrets when death was closing. For me, I I have no regrets so far because I chose to do what I want what I want to do for my life. So I left home for that in order not to have regrets like. My grandfather or my mother. I didn't want to follow the footsteps of my mother, especially. So I don't think, or rather, I hope. I wouldn't utter anything strange on my deathbed. I, I don't hope. I don't want to utter something like I wanted my baby or I wanted my family. I wanted a big mansion or take me to the take me to Monaco. Probably 
I might say that part, <laughs> but mm, but maybe uh, the most possible thing I would utter on my deathbed would be, "Where's my money?" Yeah. Might say such a thing. Thanks for listening. I hope you come back and join me again. I'm Hitemi Woods. Until next time, take care and be well. Thanks. Audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook Living in Kyoto by Hitomi Woods. Now on sale in online stores. 44 available distributors Apple, Google Play, Amazon Audible, or else. ヒデミウッズがデザインしたとっても可愛いオリジナルグッズが手に入るトートバッグ缶バッジステッカー T シャツトレーナーパーカー文具その他いろいろエリゼンドットコムで見てみてね「ERIZEN.com」E-R-I-Z-E-N.com「エリゼンドットコム」英語聞き流しリスニング、英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロード、その他の物語はホームページからお聞きいただけます。88thpp.com 88thpp.com